investigative journalist Glenn Greenwald is calling out his former employer, The Guardian newspaper. The paper recently ran an article titled, Julian Assange Gives Guarded Praise of Trump and Blast Clinton. Now, the article claims Assange, the publisher of WikiLeaks, made statements in support of Russia and Trump, all while attacking Clinton. However, Greenwald pointed out in his own article that The Guardian's summary of Assange's interview was completely false. To dis to discuss this, I'm joined by NYU professor of media studies, Mark Crispin Miller. Now, Mark, as someone who teaches students to think critically about the media, what was your response to this article in The Guardian? Well, it was, uh, on the one hand, shocking uh, to, to, to discover that The Guardian, uh, which, you know, has always been a, a reputable paper and uh, one of the flagship outlets of the li liberal media in, in, in Britain and the United States would, would run a piece uh, uh, highlighting two bald-faced lies. Basically, that Julian Assange had, had praised Donald Trump, uh, expressed a kind of optimism about his presidency, and that he also had described Russia as, as a place with a vibrant marketplace of ideas, with a tremendous amount of free expression. Uh, this, this, these two claims bore no relation to, to the actual interview that the reporter for The Guardian was purporting to paraphrase. This was an interview that Assange had done with an Italian journalist who uh, is outraged at this complete uh, and total misrepresentation of the interview she did with Assange. She has tweeted about this, but the tweet has, has been all, all, almost completely ignored. and uh, basically uh, heralded the world over. Hundreds of thousands of people now have, have uh, picked up the propaganda from The Guardian and are convinced that Assange said these things which were uh, calculated, really, to defame him, to discredit him. Uh, it's just the latest uh, propaganda salvo in a long attempt to uh, basically demonize Julian Assange and punish him for his inconvenient truth-telling. Now, Mark, you said in the article um, that these quotes were bold-faced lies. Now, we are hearing the term fake news a lot these days. Is that term meant to help us distinguish between what is true and what is false? Or could there be other reasons that we are hearing this term so much? Well, yeah, I mean, the, 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 fake news is, is, is a serious problem but not because of the fact that there are outlets online that post uh, uh, falsehoods, fringe outlets that, that post falsehoods. That's the claim about fake news. Fake news is a problem because the corporate press itself pumps out so much of it. These uh, claims in The Guardian are just one example among countless cases of, of fake news that, that has been successfully propagated as, as, as truth. I mean, I, I can't even begin to catalog all, all the, the nuggets of fake news that have been used to uh, keep the war in, in Syria going, to hey, justify... Mark, yeah. can I jump in really quickly? Um, the reporter sure. who did the actual interview with Assange has protested that The Guardian has deliberately distorted her interview and Assange's comments, and like you said, it was a bold-faced lie, but why has the press chosen to ignore this even as they retweet and repost the false claims in The Guardian? Well, why would, they, why would they pay attention to her attempt to set the record straight since what we're talking about here is clearly a, a deliberate uh, propaganda effort to defame Julian Assange and with, with no concern for accuracy or truth or any of that old-fashioned stuff. I mean, why would they mention the objections by the actual journalist who did the interview with him? It would defeat the whole purpose of uh, this fake news effort 
to attack Assange and to add to the long list of, of, of attacks on him over the last you know, few years. All right, Mark, thank you so much for this. That was Mark Crispin Miller, professor of media studies at NYU. It. Much better than the Democrat plan to name a ship after Harvey Milk, the notorious homosexual with an appetite for underage boys. The USS Deplorable. Hillary Clinton shot her mouth off during her failed presidential campaign. And one of the reasons she was clobbered by the American people was because decent, honest people are sick and tired of being called ugly names by the Democrats for simply having good moral standards and traditional values. Mrs. Clinton went on to label Trump supporters as racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, and Islamophobic. The standard liberal claptrap that we are so sick of hearing. Well, let's see. I was born Caucasian in the USA, and I believe that it's wrong for people of any skin color to rape, rob, burn cities, and assassinate police officers. Yep, guess that makes me a racist. I was born male and have absolutely no confusion about that at all, and I believe that the husband is the head of the family. Yeah, guess that makes me a sexist. I firmly believe that the family is a husband and wife living in a lifelong monogamous relationship, raising children and all of them living according to their biological, God-given gender. Yeah, I guess that puts me in the Democrats' homophobe category. I believe that every nation should have control over its own borders and has the right and duty to ensure that criminals, perverts, and terrorists are blocked from becoming citizens. Yep, that puts me on the Democrats' xenophobe list. And as an educated and experienced law enforcement officer and security specialist, I know that Islam is the most violent false religion on earth with a long, well-documented history of bloodshed, and that Islam fully intends to shed American blood on American soil. Yep, guess that puts me on the Democrats' Islamophobe list. Well, guess who else is on the Democrats' list of deplorables? God Almighty. You know why? Because the conservative values that the Democrats consider to be deplorable are generally based on the biblical principles handed down by God himself. And that is basically the difference between conservatives and liberals in a nutshell. Conservative principles tend to be based on proven biblical principles, and liberalism is based on the exact opposite. Well, here's to the USS deplorable, celebrating the most delicious defeat of godless America-hating liberalism in American history. This is Wild Bill for America. Thank you for watching, and America bless God again. You say, and you answered it, what would you say about a person that says something like that, and that's who the outgoing president of the United States is? Yeah, I'd say he's a psychopath, and, you know, he, he makes uh, Duterte look like a Boy Scout. Well, again, look at his track record. 33,000 troops surge in Afghanistan after winning the Nobel Peace of Crap Prize. The slaughter of over 40,000 in Libya. How about Syria? Assad has to go. Oh, yes, supporting those um, moderate rebels that we've never seen one picture of that have killed over 400,000 Syrians 
created a refugee crisis of over five million leaving and another several million displaced. Oh, a wonderful man. He, of course, that's why it's the Nobel Peace of Crap Prize. Gerald, uh, were you aware that Washington Post and Prop or not named True News as a Russian uh, fake news site? I know. <laughs> uh, how, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts is a fake news site. King World News is a fake news site. Yeah. yeah. How about ABC, NBC, CBS? Oh, let me tell you about a fake news site and people promoting fake news because now they're going to have the media as you, the uh, the uh, you know Facebook and Google uh, or the the social media now patrol for fake news. Wall Street. The Spielbergs, the Katzenbergs, the Cloonies, the De Niro's. He beat the rappers, Jay-Z. He beat Beyonce. All those people. He beat the major media. They all lost. And this is their this is their reprisal coming out with the He's let's hate the Russians liars. and fake the little news. suckerbergs, the Schmidt. Or maybe I'm spelling Schmidt wrong. Maybe it's S H I and then the rest. These are the hypocrites out there. The ABCs, the CBS, the NBCs, these are the people that are destroying our nation. Look what they did following the election of Trump, coming out with all this baloney about the Electoral College, putting out all these ads, taking out all this propaganda. These are the people that are destroying this nation. It's the propagandists. It's the George Goebbels School of Journalism, the major media. Jaron, I think we have a, um, and it's, there's a coup d'etat that's being attempted right now involving the Silicon Valley boys and the old dying media and rogue elements in the CIA. They are, they are attempting to, to undermine President-elect Trump. And if they could find a way to block him, they, they would do it. So far, everything's failing. And my concern is that the closer we get to January 20th, the more radical their actions are going to be to stop him. I agree with you. I agree wholeheartedly. Matter of fact, one of our top trends for 2017 is Silicon Valley 2.0. Resources or location, waterways, ports, whatever, rail transportation. The mine could be anywhere. So what we're saying is that the mine, the Silicon Valley is one mine. You saw it with the, with the hacks from the, uh, with the Podesta and DNC, how they're all in bed together and think the same way. Going back to what you said about a coup, um, I agree with you. They are so upset about losing. Again, it's not only the Democrats that lost this election. Obama lost it. They lost the House and the Senate. It was his legacy. The people said, here's to your legacy. This is what we think of you, not only in the House and the Senate, but the state legislatures. Then you look again at Hollywood. You look at the major media. You look at the neocons. This was a defeat against all of them. What did Trump say? No more of this toppling of foreign governments. What has been the Obama and Clinton administration's continual refrain? toppling of governments. So I agree with you. But on the other hand, I think Trump is a real smart guy. And he has so many generals on his staff right now. I think they see this coming, too. Now, that's my next question. Is Donald Trump loading his cabinet with retired generals because they are planning to slap down the CIA? I don't know if they're going to be able to slap them down, but they're going to definitely put them in their place. Folks, 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 don't have to hear that anymore. So look at the hypocrisy. The facts are there. We have troops on the ground. He said they wouldn't be there. We are invading a foreign country without declaring war against them, against the Constitution. But hey, for a man that says, quote, I'm really good at killing people, I guess that's just another General, several day years ago, in the life of the White you House. You predicted that we were moving into an era where, where people will pursue excellence and class. Is the election of Donald Trump part of that movement? I mean, we have a billionaire that, that obviously 
likes to live classy. Boy, you nailed it. And this is the time to do it. It's the time to do it. Look at his children, the way they dress. Look at the children, the way they dress, and put them next to a Zuckerberg that, as we would say, goes out and looks like a cafone. You never left that house when I was a young boy looking like that. Look at these, look at these silicon slobs with their attitude. Yes, look at the difference. This is the time to bring America. Here, I'll give you one. Make America great again. When was the again? Anybody out there, think of when the again was and create that again at a time when families counted, when style and elegance and grace counted. Recreate it. The people are ready to buy it. Not all the people, not the Obama believers. No, 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 not them, not the rappers. It's way above their head. Just bad rap. Bring out the instruments again. Play a tune, not a computer. It's ready. It's a renaissance time. And something new can be created if, again, one person with courage makes that majority.